Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are back with yet another Wireshark video. Today we're going to explore the HTTP stream. Now, you may notice some similarities between the TCP stream and the HTTP stream, and that's to be expected. Just realize that the TCP stream is on the transport layer, and the HTTP stream is actually on the application layer. And so there's a little bit of a differences between the different layers, but like anything else when it comes to network protocols and networking in real life versus the theoretical concept, uh, there's a lot of crossover, a lot of crossover, and we're going to be able to jump into that. So last week, we really just kind of concentrated on this bottom section right here. This week, we're going to concentrate on this internet protocol version right here. All right. Uh, so let's jump into this. We're going to right click on our same point before. I'm going to do the HTTP. Well, let's first, let's first sort by HTTP. There we go. I've sorted by HTTP. We've got our protocol. We can see all of our lovely stuff there. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go back down to that follow. And then unlike last week where we did TCP stream, I'm going to do HTTP stream. And you'll notice that there's a lot of similarities. I mean, it looks almost identical to what we saw last week. Now, right off the bat, we have it color coded just like before. Our red is our client, our blue is our server, uh, and that's to be expected. All right. So right off the bat, let's look at the very top of this picture. And we can see that we've got that get that 1.1 and then the host, the host that we're trying to contact. This is the client is trying to contact the server. What is the URL? Well, the URL that the host is trying to contact is the goat.com. That makes sense, right? The client or packet, uh, or excuse me, uh, Wireshark is picking up what the client put in to their browser to type in to get to that address, right? In this case, it was the goat.com. Now, the goat.com is our server right here in blue, and we know that, but it's important to understand what the browser put in to the URL. And this is important because if you're if you're trying to go through the process, right, and you're looking for malware or you're trying to identify what a client did on your system, did they punch in something different? Did they maybe do a typo? Uh, we can see that under what the host typed, and that's that's really where it comes into play, right? What website did they actually access? Uh, now it's important to know this is what the client put in, all right. So if it redirected or it did something else, that's not going to be here. But this is what the client put in. All right. The next point is this user agent right down here. That's our third line down. This is going to give us all the information about the browser that the client is using in order to access the website. In this case, we know it's Mozilla, which is Firefox, right, for 5.0 version. We can also see that it's uh, running Firefox right here. It tells us that it's Firefox uh, and then 115. Okay. We can also see that except right here, all that juicy information. And then we can see the language that the browser is utilizing. In this case, it is English US based, not European, not UK, not some type of other. The browser is doing English for the United States. We can also see the encoding type, gzip and deflate. And we see a keep alive signal. All of those are in the client information right at the top. The next one I want to go over is this little code right here under the server. Under the server, we can see I have an HTTP of 1.1, and we can see that it's providing us a 200. Now, all of these codes have a different meaning, but there's five normal ones that you might see. The first one is one, right? And this is just informational that a request was received by the server, and it's continuing to process it. Then we have our 200. This just means that the server, or excuse me, the client uh, request was successfully received. It's understood, it's accepted, uh, and that the server is going through the normal process of providing that information to the client as expected. The next one you might see is 301. This means that the URL has moved permanently. Uh, the resource is no longer valid, it's no longer there. So we have to go and realize that that, that that resource, that server URL has moved and they encoded it as such. The next one you might find is 404. That's a client error. The server could not find the requested resource that the client is looking for. That's a normal one. We might see this on a web page that is no longer valid. Uh, maybe you type in the web page wrong and the system comes back and says, well, technically it's under the domain, but we don't recognize the extension of that domain. Uh, and so it'll throw off a 404. 
The next one is a 500. This is a server error where the server failed to fulfill the valid request. It also means that the server encountered an error and cannot complete the request. This is the typical uh, codes that you might see right here in this HTTP. Now, each of those can provide us with a little bit of different information associated with it as we move down. The next thing I wanna get into is identifying the client versus the server. I have, I see this all the time. You'll notice me harp on this or go back to it several times over just because I have so many students in my classes that really struggle with understanding which one is which. Uh, and there are several ways we could do this. So I'm gonna close this out first. I am gonna go back to HTTP because I feel like this is going to be the better way to explain this, right? Now, we've identified the source IP address and the destination IP address. We've also identified the sort and destination port. Um, and so a lot of times we can just look at the IP address. And what I mean by that is a lot of times, about 90% of the time, we have what's called a public and a private IP address. And your private IP addresses usually start with 192.168. Your, uh, you can also see 172.16 through 172.31. And then the tens, 10.0.0.0 .0 .0 through 10.255, 255, 255. All of those are private IP addresses. And so if you find a private IP address, and your other IP address doesn't match that, that means it's going to a public IP address, means that your client is going to be on that domain and your destination IP address is going to be anything other than that 172, that 192, or that 10 network. However, in this PCAP file, you can't do it that way. And so you may be asking yourself, or you may be struggling, which one is my client versus which one is my server? Because if I follow the TCP or, I, or, or HTTP stream, it doesn't tell me. It just tells me that, hey, this is the URL, and it can get really confusing, especially for brand new students. But if I look at here, right, I wanna pay attention. Look at this right here. See this get code? This get code right here? This is where the client is expecting or requesting information from the server. I want you to think about this. You've got a get and you've got a post. The get is all about saying, hey, uh, I would like to get this. Can you give this to me? And so there's a request being made from the client. And so we know based on this code that the source is going to be the client every single time because it's the one making the request. Let's find another one. If we scroll down over here, you again can see that get. And again, it's 101. Servers don't normally make get requests of a client. Matter of fact, very, 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 very rarely will a server ever make a GET request from a client, right? Uh, if ever at all. And so every time you see that GET request, it's always going to be the source IP address. If you can remember that, you'll always be right on target. You'll always know, hey, if I see a GET request, then the source IP address is the client requesting that information. And I only mention that because I see a lot of students, a lot of students that really struggle with that concept. All right, let's, let's move on to something else that I find that clients or excuse me, students really struggle with, and it's identifying the protocol. Now, protocol is listed right here, and a lot of students would be like, oh, that's, that's the protocol. There's only one of them, right? Uh, and because it's only got one, but I wanna point out the fact that we have both UDP and TCP, and those are considered protocols within a protocol. So anytime you see a question like uh, on a CTF or any type of quiz exam or something like that, sometimes you'll notice that they want two answers. And if they ask for two answers, you need to give them one. And you may be looking at this going, wait a second, I know it's HTTP. That must mean that it's HTTPS. Well, no, if it was HTTPS, it would tell you that it's HTTPS. Well, that means it must be some other protocol. Well, yes, it is. And the answer is TCP. HTTP and TCP go along together like peanut butter and jelly. They're always together. You also have to look at UDP a lot of times, but the great news is a lot of times we can find UDP. So how do I really tell that my second protocol is TCP on top of this HTTP if I really want to be sure? Well, it's a lot simpler than you may think. Uh, believe it or not, if I just right click on this and I scroll down, you can see that it says follow TCP stream. And if I can follow the TCP stream with an HTTP protocol, 
then obviously I'm running TCP on top of or underneath HTTP. So I hope that answers your question. Uh, how do I know what other protocol may be on there if my CTF is asking me for two protocols with something like that? If I go over to, let's see this TCP stream right here, and I right click and I wanna follow, you'll notice that it's only running TCP. There is no HTTP on top of it. And if I follow, I'm sorry, follow, you'll see that right there, right? Uh, and that's the best way to find out. And again, HTTP, I can follow. I've got both in this case, all right? I hope that answers that question. All right, that's it for today. In our next video, we're gonna talk about the responses we get back from those servers and the information that we can get based on those responses uh, within our hyper -tran text transfer protocol. Uh, stay tuned for that. Until next time, I'm Dr. K. We'll see you next time.